Well, hello, everybody. I am so excited to bring Brittany to you today. We are going to be talking about vaginas. Like that is like the best word <laughs> so and it's going to be fun and and i'm sure you're going to have lots of laughs because i'm already chuckling inside um i uh, Brittany is a fierce independent woman and she specializes in holistic approach to vaginal health and hormonal health and her mission in this life is to guide women to own their bodies confidence and intuition and I can't even wait to dive into this conversation because as you can see, Brittany is vibrant and she's full of life and she's going to just make this conversation super enjoyable. So let's just get to it, girl. Yes, let's do this. <laughs> um, where should I start off with? Um, gosh, I think what I want to start off with is a little bit of about me and kind of how I came into being this feminine wellness coach and wanting to serve this mission. So I personally struggled um, in my early 20s with horrible vaginal infections, um, down to yeast infections, to bacterial vaginitis, to UTIs, on top of having extreme PMS symptoms. Um, to having irregular periods. Some months were really heavy, some others are barely even a bleed. And it left me just completely drained and um, confused as well as embarrassed. And I felt very shy about what was happening with my body because let's face it, we don't talk about this. It's not promoted. I, I can remember for me, going back into the days when you learned about your body, <laughs> if you could say that sex ed, right? Yeah. And we were, well, for me, I was only taught about how to hide my period. That was the extent of it to like to hide it, hide it. Like here's how to use tampons. Here's how to use pads, making sure that you're not, um, showing that you are having a current bleed right now, um, making sure you're clean and hygiene. Right. Um, and I took it as a hide because that's my personal, um, take off of it because when you asked questions of like, well, what is bleed, what causes bleed, what like going into the nitty gritty of the concept of our vaginas, it's not talked about. It's right. kind of like, you only need to worry about handling your bleed. Well, our menstrual cycle is far more about just our bleed. We have phases in our menstrual cycle. And I didn't learn about my phases until three years ago. Oh, I had no idea. And there, oh. and I meet so many other women that didn't know that. They would just thought like, I, I just bleed once a month. I thought it was just that. There's so much more involved into it. And so, um, I wanted to kind of speak today on that concept of the shame, the, um, how we grew up of knowing like, well, talking about your vagina is private. That is just a thing we just do not discuss. It's, it's the hidden thing, right? In the background right. that we just don't address. Um, I even see us walk around naked showing it off or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, there was a girl I watched recently where, um, she made a comment and I, I wish I remembered her name. Um, it's going to bug me now, but uh, she did a talk on the concept of how for men or at least boys, we make jokes about their penis. Like we, it's already established, right? Of like, oh, you're little pee pee or you know what I mean? Yeah, like the small, the small penis syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the small penis syndrome. <laughs> and like for like, um, women that have sons, like you, you might see this correlation happening, but then when we have our daughters, like our little girls, like they're precious, they're innocent. We do not make jokes about their, um, vagina or out speak about their vagina. And, um, it kind of correlates into our lives and we don't even realize it. And there's no shame or judgment on that, but I just want to speak more about like, we should be loving our vaginas. We should be all about our vaginas and we should know more importantly about our vaginas because believe it or not, PMS should not even be a thing for us. Right. 
Yeah, like that's well, not- no, if my husband's gonna watch this replay, Brittany, he's gonna be like, I love your vagina all day, every day. <laughs> funny thing is like men like um I have guy friends and I have men that are joining my social media and they're like yeah go vaginas like all promote vaginas and I was like yeah but then I see like other women and I, they're like no like that's not okay <laughs> and I'm like but why men okay with it that don't have it and women that do have it not okay with it and that's where I want to bring this like sense of vagina is part of us. It's an organ of our bodies. We love and cherish our brain. We love and cherish our heart, our lungs, our stomach. Why not our vaginas as well? And why do we giggle or why do we feel uncomfortable with it when we say it? And why is it in the sense of maybe even just sexualized, maybe there's um, history and trauma that comes into that. Um, I know I was sexually assaulted as a young girl and I know that that could have led into the trauma that um, catapulted my vaginal infections and affected my intimacy relationships later on and where maybe I held on to that infection in some part of my mind because that kept me safe, that kept me from not having to have sexual interactions. Right. Um, and so I never really thought of that, that mindset that yeah. we, we are very powerful creatures and we can create all kinds of things within ourselves to guard and protect. And, and that, that just, that's a great revelation, Brittany. Really it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, the other kind of message out there is really tap, tapping into what you are saying about yourself and saying mm-hmm. about your body, um, it comes back to body image always, right? But that's that includes our vagina. Um, so honoring um, ourselves mentally and physically is a, it, it goes together. You can't separate them. That's um, right. So yeah, it's just, oh man, this topic, <laughs> it gets me going. It's like, all right, what do you want me to go? Cause I'll go in any direction. Um, <laughs> Well, the three phases, you mentioned the three phases. And if you just learned yeah. about them three years ago, then I like to be, I don't know, I have an idea, but I like to, to hear your take on those three phases and, and bring that wisdom to the. Yes, I would love to. So with our menstrual cycle, um, I break it out in four phases, but there are the three main ones, which are the follicular phase, which ties in our bleed. I tend to separate that one as the first phase, just because it's such a different experience (laughs) than when you're not bleeding. Um, But follicular phase is essentially your bleed phase and your um, a week after phase of not having bleed. And then you roll into your um, ovulation phase. And this phase is actually the main reason why we even bleed. This is the main reason we have our menstrual cycle is for our ovulation. Um, And it's, there's so much importance. I think we tie it so closely to pregnancy, but there's actually so much more involvement and importance in ovulation versus just getting pregnant. Um, And then it rolls into the luteal phase. This phase is where we actually do experience PMS. And so this happens right before we bleed. So a lot of us feel the cramps, the headaches, the extreme bloating, the cravings, <laughs> yeah, totally. right? And um, I know personally for me, the cramps were unbearable for me and it actually ties into our hormones. So all there's like, um, I like to call it a little roller coaster ride of our hormones during our phases of our month, because we might like be wondering, I'm not even bleeding, but why am I having mood swings or why am I bloated when I'm not bleeding? Or, uh, there's where I, am I feeling brain fog or headaches or all those symptoms we tied to PMS, um, the days before our period, but we're experiencing it all the time right. <laughs> or wondering what the hell is going on. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So that ties into the hormones and why I actually have went on this journey of tying it all together because it all, it is all connected. 
Um, yeah. So that's just a little breakdown of the, our menstrual cycle a little bit inside. Yeah, that. I've noticed because I have an app on my phone to keep track so that I yeah. always and I keep track of when I have, make love and all that kind of stuff. So I keep track of it all. And um, one thing I've really truly noticed as I've been doing this is like a week before I'm supposed to start my period. I am like mega insecure. Like I'm hyper aware. I'm constantly like, what are you looking at? What are you doing? Like I'm needy. Like you need to, to stop, drop and roll and spend time with me right now. <laughs> yes. yes. So yeah. on that level, if it's okay to go this route, um, this is where your hormones are actually decreasing. And this is where we get a low energy standpoint. So this is where we actually want to nurture ourselves. And that's where that trigger is coming in for you of like, I'm feeling needy. I need to be nurtured. And it's just us, your body just telling you, yeah, we need to slow it down. We need to relax. We need to calm. We not, we, we have low energy for a reason. And it's because our hormones are going down. So this is where we need to reset ourselves to prepare ourselves for the next cycle. So are you giving me permission that one <laughs> <laughs> a week, one week, every, every month, I get to just throw my feet up and just take care of me. <laughs> 100% valid. Yes. <laughs> I'm putting it in the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so your husband will be like, okay, this week we don't do nothing. <laughs> All about me. <laughs> All about me. <laughs> I, love I love it. I always thought that the bleeding concept was like, us like cleansing so it was kind of like shedding or getting rid of any junk or stuff like that has found its way up there like through intercourse or whatever right yeah so actually with bleed um it is our uterus shedding the tissue that it builds up for ovulation so now when we have um I'll, I'll do a quick highlight. So we'll have our ovulation period where um, we have built out this lining of our uterus, uterus and that is just to help um, the eggs be traveled and the sperm to like reach where it needs to go to create um, a baby, <laughs> right? Fertile eggs. Um, so in that process though, um, if we do not conceive, then our body's like, okay, well, we need to clean out what we build so we can restart again. And that's what you're experiencing with your bleed. So bleed is blood as well as tissue from your uterus. Right. Well, that yeah. would make sense because yeah. my, my first day is always the worst. Like I, I, I explained to my husband, I'm like, oh, I feel like my uterus is going to fall out. <laughs> like it's just like, it's just so much pressure and yeah. gravity does not help the matter <laughs> at <Yeah>. all. <laughs> I, I can hear you. You want to lay down. You're just like, don't touch me. Just let me just be. <laughs> right. I can. I can. You go from one extreme. Touch me. Love me. Spend all your affection, and and your eyes have to stay on me all the time to like get away from me. Don't touch me. <laughs> so as long as they can pick up on that, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> like do you have a calendar on your phone, babe? Because you should you should be well in tune as to what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, it's interesting that you mentioned with the cramping occurring during, um, do you have it before or during your bleed or both? It's like the very first day. So it just kind of like, day. as I'm starting to, like I said, it starts out, it's kind of like spots and then it gets heavier. Um, I get like, that's like my heaviest day. I yeah. used to have crazy periods. I, I was actually just talking to my sister about this yesterday, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, awesome. She had an IDU or IUD or yeah, one of, IUD. Whatever, the, yeah, whatever those things are called. Um, and she just had hers removed and she's had it for years and years and years. And so she's experiencing some crazy bleeding that she's like, I thought I was going to die. And um, she experienced like clotting, like golf ball size. And I also had that experience in my twenties. I had the Depro shot and that was like havoc on me. <laughs> like I would be sitting at my desk and like, oh, everything's having a good time joking with whomever was at my desk. And then the, within seconds, I'd want to jump across my desk and pop their eyeballs out with my thumbs. Like it was just, I'm like, I do not need to be in public. I am dangerous to society. <laughs> Somebody lock me up. <laughs> Right? And, and and I bled for three months straight. Like 
um, I Google told me that if you eat lemons, it would minimize the blood flow because at the time I had a toddler and I was literally spending more money on pads than I was on diapers. Um, and I was blood, I had clots like the size of golf balls. Like it was like, I was just so deficient in iron, super weak all the time. Um, and I would eat lemons just to minimize my blood flow. And my sister had a heyday watching me go through that experience. So when she was sharing this with me last night, I'm like, you remember, right? Like you better go eat some lemons. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. It, um, on that topic, it, uh, with birth control. Um, that's, it's interesting that you say that. Cause I personally have gotten off birth control as well. I didn't have that experience. And the reason why is because sometimes we don't realize birth control is like medication. And if you take it for so long, your body gets used to a certain formation, if you will. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if you all of a sudden stop taking it, you're going to go through a detox state because depending on what birth control you're having, if it was one that you, um, hormonal versus not, or having a period during it or not, um, there's a lot of old blood just not getting released out. If you're not having your period, if you're having your period, um, funny enough with birth control, you're not actually having a real period. (laughs) It's known as just kind of a made up period cycle. It's not true blood coming out, um, and releasing the top, um, the tissues of your lining and stuff like that, because you're not ovulating, you're not building that tissue, right? Right. Right. Because you have the birth control. So serious havoc on your hormones. Yeah. So when we go off birth control, so I personally, I, I was lucky enough to know this, <laughs> not many do. And this is again, why we have these conversations because it's so important, but um, it's great that you want to get off birth control. What I would uh, advise for any listeners here is um, do it like you would if a medication you slowly wield off of it. Um, anytime you are take, like taking medication or birth control, you treat it as that such, and then slowly progress off of it so your body can detox with you that way you're not having those intense bleeds because those are scary (laughs) and they're not fun whatsoever um sister said she like tripped because she was about to pass out and she landed she threw herself on someone's car in the parking lot I'm like oh look at you (laughs) (laughs) I hope you recorded that that would have been awesome (laughs) <laughs> I wasn't there, but I would have oh, definitely recorded yeah. that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that cracked me up. Um, but then it goes back to like with the lemons that you guys are released, you learned. Um, it just shows how important food is and how it actually helps with our cycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so tell me more. <laughs> how how, how food. Like, the food. Yeah, because you you've all you said you had like this this area of your life where it was very challenging and and you felt like you were always getting these um, infections and that whole mindset shift of thinking like maybe I was asking like basically wanting that as a protection mechanism because of some past trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, I never actually had those two things come in alignment as any in any conversation I've ever had with somebody, but it makes t- total sense because yeah. we do weird things to protect ourselves, right? Yeah. Uh, so tell me how you got out of that. Like, how did you? Yeah. So from um, that journey, I discovered that, I guess I kind of put in the dots of like, things got progressively worse, obviously, like that's just going to happen when I'm not taking care of myself or being aware of it. Um, but I mean, I was drinking a lot. Um, I was eating very poorly. Like majority of my diet was pizza and ice cream. Well, <laughs> alcohol and grease. They are like ma- match made in heaven. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Um, and I blew it off of like, well, I'm young. I was meant to have fun. And we we do that as like a form of excuse, right? In any standpoint of our lives, right? Um, but in a way of me having that sense of trauma um, mindset wise of like, well, this is protecting me to not have to have in- intimacy and not having to work through my um, my conflicts, my inner, inner demons, if you will. Um, I was in a way sabotaging myself with 
the drinking, with the unhealthy eating, without taking care of my body, because that led into the yeast infections, the like unhealthiness down below, (laughs) if you will. Um, And that added into stomach pain. Um, I would double over every single time I had a meal and just complete, complete agony. Um, it was, uh, nausea started to become a thing. Like I couldn't keep certain foods down. Um, I was having migraines, um, constipation, um, even mix of with diarrhea at times. Like, honestly, my body was feeling like it was, um, shutting down or at least at war with itself. And that scared me to my core because I, I have this ultimate fear of ending up in a hospital. Like that's just my truest fear. (laughs) And I feel like it might be some of us. And so that concept there was like, I'm not going to end up in a hospital. I'm just not going to do that. Um, And through that, I luckily had really amazing friends that love experimenting with their food. They love to try any new diet fad that was out there. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll see what this is about. I'll try it. Um, I went down the road of like juice cleanse to smoothie cleanse to eating only greens to vegan to uh, vegetarian to um, somewhat kind of keto. I don't think keto was a real thing back then, but (laughs) the Atkins diet, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Some formation of that. I went on to like cleanses and detox of only having, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the master cleanse, but essentially it's just water, lemon juice. Uh, maple syrup and cayenne pepper and that was that was my meal essentially That's all you had like I've I've seen that drink for like a fat yeah. burn kind of talk tonic but I'm just like you that's all you would take throughout yeah. the day yeah oh, I did that first all in like 10 days <laughs> once and like um I mean I went to the extremes of figuring out and then um as this process was happening though I would slowly introduce the normal foods I would normally eat because obviously those diets were not sustainable. And obviously I did, I didn't really understand the concept, right? I just more was like, let's experiment here and see if I can eat this way. It's like traveling Um, around the world, but you're just traveling around the diet circle. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, no, I didn't know any better of the sense of where, um, you do need to like solely add in new foods and things like that. So I went instantly back back to my pizza and ice cream diet that I loved because <laughs> that was familiar, <laughs> right? And comfortable. Um, oh my gosh. Like it just was a huge eye opener for me of like, okay, this is where all the symptoms are coming from. Like, because I'm eating these foods. And so it just brought in awareness for my, my body because we're all beautifully unique. So how you eat and what you eat is different from each and one of us. And I think these diet fads and the health industry that's kind of promoting itself out there can be very disheartening because you're like, I'm doing all the things. Why is it not working? (laughs) And it's because you're not listening and being aware of what's, what's going to work for your body. Um, And that's what I focus on um, as being the feminine wellness coach, but as a woman and where I was at that standpoint, that's where it got me like, okay, this is why I'm puking. This is why I have horrible stomach pain. This is why I have all my symptoms. And that just projected a journey of like, okay, let's add in more whole foods. Let's add in more foods that um, I can digest and feel okay with. Um, And it was a mixture of of all the things really. Um, but I, I learned really quickly, dairy and gluten and sugar were not my friends. <laughs> and they're and, not most of our friends, but we just no. come immune to them. But you yeah. were able to flush all that stuff out of your system by yeah. going through the diet circuit. And, and then once you started eating back to your comfort place, your comfort zone, your body was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was telling you quite clearly. And, and I, that similarly, even healthy foods, you can get reactions like that. So asparagus, I've been able to clean everything out of my system. And then I love asparagus, but when I go to eat it now, my body has a really hard time breaking it down. And so I'm like, "Eh, it might be good for some people, but it just, my body don't like that. (laughs) Right. Exactly. hundred percent. Actually, currently for me right now, I have a particular bacteria in my small intestine that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
this has led to where I can't enjoy sweet potatoes and potatoes in general or beans, like certain like hard carbs. And I was like, those are super healthy, like, <laughs> but yeah. I can't digest them currently. So I have to like starve out that bacteria because those foods feed it. Is it SIBO? Is it SIBO that you have? So it's not SIBO actually. Um, I, I uh, went through a functional medicine practitioner for this because I was like, I need to know more details. So we did a whole lot of uh, stool testing and blood testing to figure this out. Um, so it's on the cusp of SIBO, but not yet reached it because I still have healthy bacteria that are in there. Um, with SIBO, those are, those bacteria are gone. Yeah. I have SIBO. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? I, I looked at it. I won the lottery. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> right? You're like, not really. But no, the, it can be healed. And that's just, it takes time with that. Um, but yeah, so I thought the same thing. I was like, oh crap, I got SIBO. Um, and I learned that not quite, but it's on the cusp. And so that's why I'm being very proactive right now mm-hmm. to avoid that. Um, but yeah, it just speaks into like, um, I did a talk actually yesterday, a little bit about, um, I've tried all the things like I've, I'm eating healthy. I'm working out. I'm meditating. I'm journaling. I'm, I I'm hitting the health to a T. Why am I not losing weight? Why am I still experiencing PMS? Why do I have vaginal infection still? Um, it, and it all comes back to you. Well, are you eating just because of what you hear other people say to eat? Or are you eating for what is actually healthy for you and your digestive system? Right. And it just always comes back to them. It's, it's hard and it is frustrating because we're not taught that. And it, it really, we don't have the support or like understanding around that. And that is no judgment. There's no shame about that. Um, but that's what we're here for, right? Like we're here yeah. to like, show them and educate them and and bring this awareness that is so important that your body like I said is unique to you it's like your fingerprint (laughs) no it'll tell you it'll tell you what you it likes and what it doesn't like (laughs) yeah and it and it flows actually into your stool another concept I love talking about not only love talking about about poop too (laughs) Oh, when, when my kids were growing up, I was going through a season where I was really, really sick and I was going through a naturopath, going through this program, healing my body with food, trying to figure out like learning how to eat for my blood type. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah. Yes, I have. So that, that there, there's a lot of, a lot of amazing truth to those, that, um, that book of eating for your blood type. I healed myself through their concepts, but we would talk a lot about poop because my naturopath wanted to know, how's your poop? So I generally at the dinner table would ask my kids, how's your poop? And I think my daughter was like preteen and she would always make her feel uncomfortable. So I'm like, okay, well, how's your snickerdoodles? She's like, mom, you ruined snickerdoodles for me. I can't even. (laughs) I'm like, there's worse things to be ruined. (laughs) that's true (laughs) oh my gosh yes yeah I love it I love that you nicknamed it snickerdoodle (laughs) (laughs) well poop can be so so different many shapes and sizes and in the milk right (laughs) so true oh my gosh hilarious we can Um, learn a lot from it we really can we can learn a lot from our stool and that and it actually plays a part in the health of your vagina and the health of your hormones, because it comes back to your digestive system. And if your body is actually absorbing the foods it's eating to nurture and get it to function. Um, So it's like, again, it's like this map of where everything is like dying together. Um, And yeah, it's just, it's amazing how complex our bodies can be, but with that said, I'm a true believer that it doesn't have to be hard and confusing. Right. Yeah. It right. just takes a little practice of like anything you strive for, right? Of like yeah. in sports or in your work, it takes practice to learn to be really good at it. The same concept is with your body. And and journaling is a huge factor to be able to actually like to listen to what your body's saying, how your body's reacting to certain foods. You know, so often we we can have like a super, there's people that really wrestle with anxiety and 
those heightened emotions and depressive uh, situations. But if they were to take a track of what they're eating and then how they're feeling and see how those two things align up, um, and then maybe shifting the food choices to see if it affects their emotions, then th they can make better choices to make themselves get out of those dark places. It's amazing. Our bodies are so, everything just like works. If, if we just listen, <laughs> it communicates to you. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, I say sometimes to my clients that like your symptoms are not, um, out to get you. They're not to actually cause you pain. They don't want to. It's just actually a way of your body to let you know that there's something amiss. That's a signal to send you that, Hey, this isn't working for us. We need to change. We need to pivot <laughs> our direction here. So that way we don't have to have this experience. Um, and I know sometimes we, we sit in the pain, right? Like the, the silence, it comes back to, um, what we kind of grow as women of, um, it could be the masculine world that we live in, but this is why I say I'm a feminine wellness coach because I want to bring back the feminine energy for us of like, we don't have to sit in our silence of pain and discomfort just to show that we are strong, right? No. Yeah. yeah. So this is where I'm just like, I want to bring that back in of like, own your vulnerability, speak it out. Cause that is just so powerful because there's so many women out there that are not able to connect the dots. Like I did, right. I did, I did that kind of in a way that journal, um, that was like my stepping stone into it of just even building that awareness mm -hmm. and forming that to be a understanding of like, okay, this is actually very common. There's so many women out there that are suffering, but at the time I didn't know. And so I felt like I was alone in my journey. Yeah. And so that's where it left me to figure it out on my own. And then I realized I don't have to figure it out on my own. I can actually get help. I can seek it from someone that's been through it and I can actually heal myself. Like, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with just you. things that we can get at the corners, not the corner store, but like <laughs> at the market, right? <laughs> I know. Um, but it, it's, it's so, and exercise, that has been like my nemesis. Cause I'm not, I, uh, I'm not feeling a hundred percent with my body right now. Um, I'm wrestling with some other new health thing, trying to figure out my gut and I've got SIBO and I also have this thing, well, and this is where the confusion comes in. My doctor will tell me that I am creating too much acid in my stomach and my naturopath tells me I'm not creating enough, but what happens when I eat and it doesn't happen every time, but it, um, some, some seasons it goes, it's been going on for years now, but I'll eat something and instantly my, um, I'll start getting the hiccups or I'll get this tightness in my chest. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'll feel like I'm suffocating. Like my esophagus just closed and I can't breathe. I can't take water. I can't talk. I can't anything. And then some, sometimes I can sit back and when the hiccups come in, I can just stop eating. Even if it's like the second bite, I'll just sit back. It could take 40 minutes before I can wow. get, get uh, that to release. Wow. And then I can eat my dinner again and not, not a problem. And other times it'll force me, like, I'll end up having to go get sick just so I can get air, like, because wow. I can't breathe. Like, it's scary. Some, some episodes are way more scarier than others, but the doctor wants to give me a pill to get rid of the acid in my gut. And the naturopath says I'm not creating enough. So I'm like, so I took the pill thinking, okay, well, I, I did it a couple um, for about three days and my episodes started happening more frequently. And I'm like, I think you're wrong. Like the guy gave me 30 seconds of telling him what's going on and what I've tried over the last year, number of years. He's like, this is what's going on. I'm like, dude, you didn't take blood. You didn't do nothing. Like, um, the medical system is just like quick to give you a pill. Like it drives me nuts. <laughs> I, I felt that way. Um, I, that's instantly, I was like, I agree with your naturopath instantly when you were telling me that. Cause I learned as well that, um, our burping and our, um, uh, our feeling of like trapnet in our throat, that tightness is actually experience of low uh, acid. Like, but even heartburn is actually low acid, which we tie it with too much acid, which is actually the other way around. <laughs> and so it's just crazy. But um, 
when people, people suffer for way too long, like I've known people with heartburn that had take crazy medications for heartburn, wow. but it could be just making it way worse with the medications that they're being given. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, it comes back to kind of also my story a little bit with that scenario of where I went to the doctor for my vaginal infection, because that was the one that lingered the longest for me. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. Like, help me. Right. Um, especially when we're in this kind of discomfort and pain, you just, yeah. you want the quick fix, like give it to me now. <laughs> yeah. Like, make the magic wand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like just make this happen. Um, and, uh, they would give me a, a medication called Diflucan. Um, and it would work for a little while, but then once I got off of it, it, it the infection came back. And so the, the doctor literally told me, well, then you just have to take it for the rest of your life. No, thank you. Nope. I walked out. I was like, this ain't, no, this is not my life. This is not how I'm choosing to live it. Like, I don't want to be stuck on a medication for the rest of my life. Um, and I know there's many women out there that will agree with me. Like, no. <laughs> and there's um, people that are stuck in that space that don't want to be in that space. Yeah. That yeah. Oh, and then it's like, I feel trapped because it's like, well, here I am being in horrible discomfort and pain. And all I want is relief but then you're making me have this choice where I have to be reliant and um, almost controlled by a pill just to have some relief. And I, I know so many um, out there are okay with that. And the, Hey, I'm do what you feel is right for you. But for me, I was just like, that medication is going to cause other problems down the road. And I didn't want that for myself. And who's to say my body wouldn't feel resistance to that medication. And then it comes back again. Where am I then now? So that is where I just had to like really step into it's time for me to do the work and figure out what my body actually needs. And wellness is a journey. Yeah. Just like you're saying, like you, you got a part of your health under control and then something else came up from, and it could have been something that happened way, way long ago in your early childhood days that build up over time. And now you have this, you have to process through, right? Well, I know I, in my, yeah, in my younger years, I didn't drink water. If it didn't have sugar in it, I didn't uh, want it. Uh, Coca-Cola was my beverage of choice. I wrecked my gut guaranteed. I have like fried it. And so um, there has been a season um, in my health journey where I was knocking on death's door. I was three points away from needing a pacemaker. I was over 200 pounds, but showing up as anorexic malnutrition because my body was just rejecting everything. And then anytime stress hits my life, like any, any food I put in my mouth comes through me like water, talk, you know, stock poop. Like it's clear as day that my body's back in that state where it's just rejecting. And so I have to be smarter than myself and I go get injections with all the nutrients that I need so that my body can't repel it. It just goes straight into my bloodstream so I can regain some strength and energy and, um, just, you know, you know what our body needs, like the vitamin B's and the C's and the magnesium and all of the good stuff. I have to get it right into my bloodstream before my body can reject it out. And so I can build up the strength to, to start making it and do what it needs to do on its own. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I, I love that you shared that story because I, um, I was going down this path with this uh, functional medicine practitioner who loves supplements. She was pumping me up with so many supplements for my uh, situation. And here's my intake or my experience with it was I started actually not feeling okay with the supplements. Like my body was kind of rejecting it. And I was like, okay, well, let's just try um, focusing on foods that tie to these supplements and let's see how that works. And I respond more like best with the food versus the supplement. But with that said, there are plenty of women out there that need the supplement as an extra boost to help them with their situation, just like you with the shot, it needs to go right into the bloodstream for your situation. And, and I think this, like we throw these concepts of like, well, this worked for me and um, you need all these supplements and you need all of this type of food. And we just throw it down each other's throats because like we had success and, and we all are looking for that quick fix, but it's just, it comes back to like, that might not work for you 
right? Those supplements yeah. might not work or the supplements might work. This is where you get to explore. I personally find it fun and I make it fun <laughs> to explore our bodies and get to know ourselves and, yeah. and, and know that like the journey doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Um, there's ease in understanding our bodies. It does take time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you'd be amazed of like, if you just reduce inflammation from your body, you can see like some women see results within a week. <laughs> inflammation is such a killer, right? And we don't, we don't value the fact of getting that stuff out of our system as much as we should like the pizzas and the breads and the carbs and the sugars and all of the alcohol and everything else that um that we enjoy like that whole social component um we tend to get the inflammation I remember there was this one time and I'm like I was this was like 10 years ago I we went to a wedding and I showed up so we flew went to a wedding we had like I, I'm not I'm not supposed to eat red meat, but we had like a bunch of red meat. And so, yeah. and it was so good. Like, it's so good, right? Like, <laughs> oh and then I was drinking wine because you were socializing with the, the, at the wedding and my foot like swelled up. I couldn't walk. Like it was like a, a form of gout. Like I wasn't diagnosed with it, but when I asked Dr. Google, all my symptoms, <laughs> everything kind of led to gout. So I'm self-diagnosing myself that that's what it was. Um, and because I couldn't walk on it for like a week, I was like, this is insane. Wow. It's excruciating, but it's that inflammation, the high sugars, the rich proteins that my body was like heck to the no, like, and so I'm like, okay, I really don't drink a lot of wine anymore <laughs> and, oh. and red meat. I do still have, but it's like only a couple of times a week and I have smaller portions than the rest of my family. Cause they're all like, meat eaters so <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so I'm, I'm just I can still have those things so enjoy your foods but just know your moderation know what how much you can tolerate and how much your body will allow you to have because oh. when you're listening to all those bells and whistles it uh it'll scream at you if you're not gonna listen like it has to be <laughs> I'll let you know <laughs> yeah good totally. times yeah. Um, I wanted to touch base. Sorry. I just re uh, recalled that you mentioned about like your movement um, with like, that was your like, oh, being feel. allergic to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I laugh because I actually ran into it. We went to another wedding this past couple of weeks ago and there was a young a lady that was at our table that I met for the first time. And she was talking about a condition that she gets when she gets all sweaty, her skin gets really red. Yeah. She, and, and she's like, yeah, I think I'm allergic to exercise. I'm like, me too. Like, I'm like, yes, I am not the only one on the planet that is allergic to it. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> I know it's just my me. It's I'm just hanging on to that excuse to stop to not move, but I know I yeah. need to move. Right. <laughs> to get <Yeah>. over myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, it, that that is funny though. We gotta again, we gotta have fun. We gotta make jokes of it. We know we're aware of like, okay, now I really do need to work out. Or and this is where um I love saying if more pivoting to say movement versus exercise or workout because of the yeah. stigma around that. But exactly. with movement, that also comes into understanding exercises were designed by men for men. So a lot of those workouts out there are actually not tailoring or factoring the menstrual cycle for women and the flux mm. of hormones. So when you have those moments of where you might have experienced this where certain weeks um, in the month, you're like, I, I can't work out. Like I literally have no energy to do that. Or I feel like crap because I'm, you know, experiencing the PMS. Like I don't, I don't, can't even function. <laughs> right. Some of us are experiencing this. Even there's um, ovulation period where some of us might actually feel cramps or headaches during that, um, that time. Again, it comes back to our hormones are imbalanced. And this is why we're experiencing these symptoms. 
But when it comes to movement, this is where tracking is actually really vital for us to understand our, our menstrual cycle in the sense of where our hormones are at. So if um, your beginning phase, your follicular phase, you're actually coming out of that low standpoint of energy from your period. And then your energy is actually spiking up in ovulation. So you are ready. You are pumped. You are energetic. You want to take advantage of this. <laughs> so I can work out for one week out of the month and it can be totally good. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah. And then there's a point where, um, our estrogen levels will come back down again. Um, and this is where movement of like cardio is really good of the low energy part. So getting out and moving, like walking, um, doing a little dance in your kitchen. I love dancing in my kitchen. I do. Um, <laughs> it's so fun. I don't know why, but it always has to be my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and then it's, and then it's like, okay, well now that I have the spike of energy and you notice this out of your body, you start building this practice when you're tracking too, of like, okay, I'm starting to have this boost of energy. And this kind of happens towards the end of our follicular phase where um, we're done with our period. And all of a sudden we're like, let's do this. Let's I'm ready for the gym. I'm feeling good about myself. Sign up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is where then you incorporate the intense workouts, like your hit program, your um, weight training. Um, I'm, I'm big in the concept of where, uh, we really only need to train really hard for three days of the week. And then just incorporate the small movements of walking. I mean, walking is the new pill. I'll be truly honest with that. Walking every day will save your life, truly. Um, uh, but yeah, like we, we put the stigma of actually like, I have to work out hard and I have to work out every day and has to be multiple times in the day. Well, actually over-exercising is a thing and that actually um, impacts our hormones. It will cause an imbalance in our hormones and it hurts our body when we work out so hard like that. So actually just taking that in and registering, okay, these are the weeks that I'm like, we're good, let's do this. And these are weeks where I have to just keep it calm. Don't do anything extravagant. <laughs> yeah, and, and be okay with that because then you'll actually start to see results. Okay, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> oh, you're good, you're good. Um, yeah, yesterday I was driving my son to hockey. He's 16, I was driving him to the rink and there was a track that came on. I love music. It just, I can't sing worth a dang, but I like, I, and I'm, not, I'm not a professional dancer. So I sometimes can look like a chicken out of water. <laughs> So, but my a chicken, a uh, fish out of water. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> but my yesterday, <laughs> this song came on in the radio or on our on our stereo as I'm driving my son to hockey, and he's scrolling his phone, and I start like moving my shoulders, and it's like jamming it out, and he's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm dancing." Like, how else do you dance when you're driving? Like, <laughs> he's like, "You look like you're having a seizure." <laughs> So, okay, hey, mom. <laughs> what else? Do you, thanks, bud. Thanks. Oh, Maybe I'll God. stop dancing in my Jeep because everybody's going to think I'm going to have a seizure. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Stick to the kitchen, girl. Stick to the kitchen. Our little <laughs> safe heaven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. Right. I enjoy that part. I actually have gone live in my app a few times where and just danced it out because yes um and I'm not sure if you've met or have seen Misty um I can't remember her last name but she does body groove she does like she used to be a uh, fitness instructor and she got really frustrated with like all the rigorous like all the crazy hit workouts and this and having to do all the things um, and she just wanted to come and bring fitness back to a fun and enjoyable space and she literally does like this uh, these dance classes that's not choreographed she literally there's no way she'll like tap like let's do it highs lows like you're getting a workout and she even has people that will just sit on a couch and just move, tap their toes and move their arms right like just so that they're getting some kind of form of movement whatever they can handle um, and I absolutely love her story she's got a phenomenal story um, with bulimia and, wow. and her journey of just always having to be that certain image for the fitness industry, right? Like just yeah. messes with our psyche. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I love that. That's why. Yeah. Again, it's like, it's movement ladies. It's not yeah. you have to overwork yourself to death and try to schedule it in the day. Like, yeah. And, and do know that if you're cleaning your house, that is a workout. So if you just did laundry, you're up, you're down, you just give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> or carrying all those babies I, equipment. Like I'm just yes. still amazed to this day of how anyone can travel with a kid because of all the stuff kids have to have, right? Like yeah. bags on bags and their strollers. And I'm like, I'm seeing these women just lift it up like nothing. <laughs> and I'm like struggling with my bag. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. these are buff. <laughs> Mamas are buff. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Rock stars for sure. For Definitely. sure. Oh, this has been such a fun conversation, Brittany. Really, I was so excited when we connected originally and we started talking about vaginas. I'm like, yes, we so need to have this conversation. <laughs> yes. Love your vagina. Just bringing in awareness and knowing that like, and it all comes to every conversation that we have and the more awareness that we bring to what we put in our mouth and how we treat our gut and our mind affects all of our body systems right um and so just being being gracious with yourself allowing yourself the time and space that you need in order to explore what your body needs um really like being a scientist of your own self right so that you don't have to always be dictated by doctors pills and prescriptions and obviously their misdiagnosis (laughs) so um yeah. So thank you so much for bringing this insight. So if somebody wanted to touch base with you and talk more about vaginas, how would they get in touch with you? So I will be giving a link out to um, my website, but then also um, I'm on social media, of course. So um, I have Facebook under just Brittany Anderson, but you can find me um, better through my group that I have. It's a very private um, group for just women, girls only, I like to say, (laughs) where um, it's called Be Power, Your Holistic Guide to Vaginal and Hormonal Health. Um, This is a very powerful community where we can vent and PMS together. (laughs) That's inviting. I'm right. (laughs) Not alone in this. Um, and then I have my Instagram, of course, where it's um, Brittany.wellness.coach that you can follow me. But then I am, I would, I'm all for the concept of just jumping on a call to see and listen where you're at. That is the biggest thing. Again, like the concept of where um, we have these doctors, but they don't have the time to listen to what's really occurring for us. We know our bodies best. We know what's wrong. Um, intellectually. So this is where you get to now um, connect with someone that's been through it and listens and actually understands like where you're at and then can guide you to a possible solution for you. Um, So I'm doing kind of a desire. I love calling it a desire session because it's like, let's tap into our desire. What is our beautiful image that we want to see for our bodies, for our health, for our vaginas, <laughs> you know, and yeah. just breathe into that desire state. So I would love to extend that out, but then I'm also going to be giving um, Stacy here to send you guys. I, I again, um, I think what would work best if that's okay with you. So I see is like, once they book the call, it'll automatically receive a um, journal for the food, move, poop, uh, journal that I have. It's just a beautifully already designed out PDF. It's editable, but you can print it out if you're one of the handwriting type like I am. <laughs> and you can just follow for three days of like, you don't have to change your diet at all. You're just noting what you are currently doing and how it feels. And then looking at your stool. I know maybe some of you are like, yo, I don't want to look at it. You don't have to get in the bowl and start fishing. Yeah, you don't have to touch it. <laughs> Just look before you flush it and just take note of how it looks, what the coloring is. Um, is it flooding, sinking? Um, that can tell us a lot. And um, you can do this before the call or I can guide you um, for it after the call, either one, but this will help you really understand how healthy your digestive system is to then there might be a solution for what is occurring for your symptoms. Yes, and we could all use some um, solutions for our symptoms. <laughs> 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100
Yep. <laughs> so, thank you. That is a very generous offer, Brittany. So anyone that is listening right now and you want to have a quick call with Brittany, she has, she's going to give us the calendar link. I will post that in the Beautiful You coaching app. Um, and then you'll get a downloadable guide to basically walk through some, just examining what you're currently eating. You don't have to make any big changes right now, but just examining what you're currently eating. Take some pictures of your poop and send them to your kids because they love it. Um, <laughs> hashtag snickerdoodle. <laughs> Hundred percent yes. Can we make this a thing on social media? <laughs> <laughs> they would probably just filter it and censor it and tell uh, it appropriate anyway. <laughs> Not fun. Come on. <laughs> Come on, give it the program basement. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, definitely to reach, reach rewind, <laughs> touch base with Brittany and just explore because she's, as you can tell, she's vibrant, she's fun and she's lighthearted and she'll meet you right where you're at. So thank you, darling. I really, truly appreciate the time that you spent today to share your wisdom and your story, your journey of coming to this this place of health and, and how you're impacting the lives of other women in mind, body, and soul. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> awesome.